can we talk about the mental strain of mm -hmm. multiple day matches? Because I know we talked earlier yeah. about um, when you went to Italy yeah. to do that, yeah. and you kind of had breaks in between. I'm not 100% sure of the format, yeah. but you like shot, then you had a day break, yeah. and then you shot. Mm -hmm. But just having that day off instead of going there and wearing yourself out. You want to talk yeah. a little bit about that? Yeah. So in Italy, there were four days total of competition. Mm -hmm. um, all the shooters were divided up. The Open and Youth shot on day two and four. Okay. And then Senior, Production, Ladies, that was it. They shot on one and three. Okay. And so I was on one and three because I was on the ladies team. And I really like being on the first day out because I felt like you're on a high from the open ceremony. Yep, yep. And I just got done practicing the three days prior. And, you know, I was really excited. I felt super good. Jet, I had no problem with jet lag. And I was just going through my mental process. Had a super solid first day. Mm -hmm. Absolutely loved it. Um, I walked away from that, that day first overall. Like yep. Out of everyone who shot that day. Amazing. And then going to day two... It was, it was one of those where I really wanted to go Day support. two you're shooting or like day no, in between? No, it was a break. So okay. it was like day two of the competition yep, okay. where the open yep. and the youth were shooting. I really wanted to be able to go and support my teammates, mm -hmm. you know, see how everyone I knew was doing, see how we we became really good friends with the Great Britain team. So like see yeah. how they were doing. And it was hard because it was hot. And, you know, they shot stages that we shot the day before. They weren't different stages, but it was yeah. still, like, kind of weird being out the range, not competing, then being in full competition mode. I was in slight relaxation mode type yeah. of thing. But your mind I, was still trying to focus and mentally think yeah. about how you did it and how yeah. they're doing it. Was that better? And, exactly, yeah. exactly. And then Even though me. you were first overall on day one. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I still dropped quite a few shots, but it was, like, one of those where I was like, oh, that's a good way. I wish I would have done that. Or, mm. you know, it was, yeah. like, it was one of those things, but... I wanted to go support the team, but I also knew that if I stayed too long, I didn't want to get the placement in my head. I didn't, I mean, I was shooting it very much two separate days, like my days of competition. Like, yep. you know, that score is for that day. Yep. It will not change going, I mean, even though it did in my head, I was like, nope, two separate scores. Yep. But I didn't want that to get in my head. I didn't want to get too tired, get too hot. Mm -hmm. And so I was only out there for three hours maybe okay um but i went around said hi to everyone but it was it was definitely hard and when i woke up on the third day of competition which is my second yep, last your second competition, second day of shooting yeah yep. second day of shooting i felt really tired like i think at that point just the jet lag was kind of catching up to me and the adrenaline was starting to crash and i was like really really tired mm -hmm. And we did a little bit of sightseeing on my day off, which is maybe a slight mistake. I think I got a little bit tired, got off focus a little bit. Yeah. Um, the first few stages on day two were a little rocky, but then I had lunch and finished super strong. Um, but it was, it was challenging just to not get in your head about, oh, I could have done that better. Oh, how that person shot, that was really good. Yeah. Or, oh, they they don't have as much wind as we did or oh today's a hotter day what's tomorrow going to be like yeah. and you know like oh is it going to be really windy tomorrow is it not is it going to be hot is it going to be cloudy and so it was one of those where i'm like you know what i just need to stop because there were starting to get some variables but for a two-day match like when i shoot the nrl finale or prs finale yeah i really like that format just because i feel like that's obviously what i'm used to when i shoot two-day matches but i think i've gotten the hang of like not fully letting down you know saturday night you give it almost your all like on saturday and like you give it your all on sunday as yep. like one final push and yeah i don't really do anything like with people on saturday night just because i know i need to stay focused yeah so do you prepare yeah. saturday night do you get dope cards ready or do you just do the same I... thing you do you don't go over the matchbook you maybe look at the yardages and yeah i'll look at the yardages um i know like dot the day like oh yeah i saw that prop they were shooting off of tomorrow or mm -hmm. or whatnot um but yeah i never look at the matchbook i'll look at the yardages like you know what's our father's target tomorrow yep. but i make sure that my gun is clean i'll typically run a boar snake down him make sure the lenses are clean hear that <laughs> boar snake i do it too yeah greg, greg doesn't like that we do that really no. Oh man, I love it. I think it's great. Think uh, mine it's is great. so dirty, it won't fall off the other side. That's how bad mine gets before I clean it. It won't come out. 
And then I go, that's, it takes me like five minutes to even put it through. Oh, that's no. embarrassing. But I've been beating you sometimes with that dirty barrel. With that, okay, with that dirty <laughs> barrel. All right, but remember, now I'm shooting a voodoo. So yeah, I yeah. Now the tables have turned a little bit. Yeah, you did beat me with the voodoo. Before did. you didn't, because you were running your Remax in Utah, right? Uh, yeah. And I beat you there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you got your voodoo, and then yeah. you beat me. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Mm -hmm. Well, let's Who see knows? how uh, Who knows? a couple days go. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that's like my mental process is not overthinking it. Get good rest. Make mm -hmm. sure I chug a bunch of water before I go to bed. Yep. Um, yeah, I really don't think there's anything that's like, I don't, you know. What do you do to train? So you got yeah. your own range. Yeah. yeah. So what do you do here? Do you do anything beforehand or do you just go and shoot matches? Do you dry fire? So I don't really do a lot of dry firing. Okay. Um, because with the Remax you couldn't. I could. It's like a firing pin. <laughs> oh, that sounds um, like a pain in the butt. Not that bad. You got used to it. <laughs> um, I think there's value in dry firing for yep. sure. Um, I well, part of it is I don't have like a great place to do it in my house. Okay. But I see value that. Well, yeah. But I think it's really good for staying on target because like the targets are so small. Mm -hmm. Really making sure you're on target. You're stable having good trigger control, making sure all your fundamentals are good. Like I definitely see value in that. Like if yep. it's, I mean, if it's bad weather out, if it is. Like the wind today or wind. something like that. If I want to practice, I'll, I would come out and dry yeah. fire because I may miss and then that crushes your mentality. Yeah, Why am I missing that target? Well, it's because of the wind, but mm -hmm. I'm rock solid on it. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. I mean, you know, in practice, it's okay to miss. You're practicing. Oh, so, you know, if you I don't miss, want the mental drain. If, I don't want the disappointment. Yeah. I mean, I look at, like, if I miss, I need to figure out why I missed mm -hmm. and correct down my second shot. Yeah. So, you know, but, I mean, it's it's just a different aspect. But I think there's value in dry firing, but I like live firing. Um, and, I mean, I don't come out here and I shoot, you know, 300 rounds. I don't do yep. that. Yep. I may shoot just 50 rounds. Yep. But it's just getting behind my rifle. And so what I do, if I have... Like the NRL finale is in June, at the end of June. Okay. So between now and then, I'll basically split up my time into three different sections. I'll have like now, where if I need to change anything, I'll change it. You know, I'm breaking in a new bag right now. You know, oh, I'll make okay. sure that's yep. done in plenty of time. And there's a time in the middle where you're like, okay, how am I feeling on the spool? How am I feeling on the rocks, on the okay. team trap? And just like kind of like, okay, is there anything I really need to refine and practice? But I'm still covering the bases, like, yep. or I need to work on tires. But I'm going to work on tires, and then I'm going to follow up on the rooftop, and then on the barrels, and then go back to the tires. Okay. And then leading up to the competition is when I will basically – come out here and practice if I'm at a match. I will wear my mag holder. I will wear, I'll have like my pocket knife. I'll like basically try and do everything the same as in a match. I will write dope cards. I will do everything with my Kestrel the same as I would in a match. I will listen to music, wear my hearing pro, listen to music before and after. I mm -hmm. will make, um, like something I do is after stage, I write notes. So I make sure that I write notes um, like after I'm done practicing and just really trying to mimic a match here at home. Yeah. I mean, of course, like the pressure. Do you being... go through all the stages too? Like do mm -hmm. each one, all 10, or you, you just do a couple, pick and choose? I or... do, I'll do some 10 rounders. I'll do some 12 rounders. I will do, um, I don't know, I'll try to make it crafty, maybe okay. make it mental. I can shoot this target, this target, this, this, or I'll just do it simple like a just, Try to KYL. Just do a KYL off the rooftop. Yep. Just keep it simple, easy. But and do you do closer ranges or do you push it uh, or just? My strategy is push it. Okay. So, you know, it's better to be over prepared than under prepared. Mm -hmm. So I shoot or I practice with smaller targets. Mm -hmm. um, just if I go to a match and if they are really small targets, I'm prepared and I don't freak out. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's a really small target. Yep. Like, oh yeah. Okay, that's why I used to shoot. Yep. Just at home, it's 100 yards, a yep. two-inch target, awesome, great. Or, you know, if they're bigger targets, then you're like, all right, there yeah. you go. There's a little bit more yep. wiggle room for your wing call or something, right? Yeah, because, like, for me, I got that three-inch target at 275 because that's where my corner of the lane goes. Yep. So I practice with my center fire off of barricades on a basically one MOA target. Mm -hmm. So then if I can hit that, 
Well, yeah. when I go to a match, you're shooting one and a half to two MOA off yeah. of barricades. Exactly. So I go to a match, I'm like, oh, God, that's just huge, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. There you go. Yeah. And I'll also do uh, drills to push my time limit just to be able to, like, get on the barricade, get on my target, and mm -hmm. send my first shot in a certain amount of time and be able to follow up with an impact. Um, and in my head, it's okay to miss in practice so that, A, you can correct it, if you miss because of wind, all right, why did I miss? What side yeah. did I miss off of? What did I need to bump up my wind call or take it down to? So then when I go to a match, and if I were to miss, I don't panic. I'm like, oh, all right, I saw where it went. I know mm -hmm. what I need to do. If I felt the wind die down, I know what I need to put my wind call down to. If I felt to pick up, I know what I need to take my next wind call to. And so then, you know, it just better prepares me for anything that happens at a match. Because yeah. I'll miss at a match. I have yet to clean. I've been close to cleaning like a monthly club match, but I haven't mm -hmm. cleaned. Cleaned one quite yet. It was one shot off. One shot. Yep, been there. But, done that. But we miss. And so here I want to prepare myself for if I were to miss, I know what to do. Yep. So, yeah. Nice. Yeah. So a lot. So you say you do that. You break it into three sections. Mm -hmm. And then like how often are you doing that? Is it like every day you come out? Or you think about it, or do you play with your stuff at home, yeah. or is it like every other day, three times a week? Or I mean, definitely shooting is always on my mind. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> but I think it it depends. Like if it's a finale, like mm -hmm. a Paris finale, I will try to go out every day that week, just be behind my rifle. Or if that is live fire, three times a week, and then I drive fired two times. Wow. Okay. And, you know, that's that. Mm -hmm. Leading up to Italy, I was practicing a lot. Right. I was doing what I could because I was like, I'm going to go in the best prepared I can be. Like, yeah, I know absolutely. that, you know, I'm sure there's something I did not practice for, but I think it really depends. It also depends on what we're doing, what's happening. It also depends on the weather. Like, I live in Colorado. Mm -hmm. Back in March, we got 30 inches of snow. I couldn't shoot out here because all of my targets were covered. Yep. So part of it is just being flexible with the weather, yep. what I'm doing. I mean, I work part-time with the PRS. I'm a full-time college student. So there mm -hmm. are days where I don't make it out to the range, yep. even if I want to. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. yeah. It's, really cool. just, it's time management. Yeah, <laughs> all right. Time with management. everything. Yep. Yeah. 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 Well, awesome. Well, Thanks for coming on and yeah. talking about all of, all the things. Way more than I ever thought, but you're better than me. So it, it is it is true. She beat me. So yeah, we'll see points. how. Yeah. But how much overall, though? You know, the both days You kicked my butt. Because <laughs> you got to think, day one, you, I think, what, you dropped 11 or something like that? Mm -hmm. I think I dropped four and then on the first stage and then three on the second stage. And then I started mm. coming into it, but... Yeah. No, you got me overall. That's all right. Good job. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> this weekend, though. This weekend. I I'm coming. You said I'm here for fun, so that, that's... Uh, this is like the one match. It's not a U.S. Pirate qualifier. It's not for... I'm going to have my points for this year for NRL. Is it a perfect score? Uh... 300. No, it's not. Oh, well, hold on, so... Oh, good for you. <laughs> Three weekends in you. a row. Good for boom, you. Boom, boom, boom. And I beat you and Paul doing it, too. Uh, that was in uh, Utah. That was one of the three. I know. That was a good one. That was a good one. That was a good match. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. But hey, that was with your Remax and I got a voodoo. So life life has changed. Well, that's what it is. That's it's got to it be it. Girls, I beat you with my voodoo. Yep. yep. So I got to look out on Saturday. Yeah. But thanks for coming on. Thank thanks you. Thanks for letting everybody in on all your secrets. Well, Hopefully they can do the kind of same thing. Well, what is that book that we read with uh, Winning with, in With Winning in Mind yep. by Lanny Basham. Yep. I've started reading that and mm -hmm. it's not an audiobook, so I haven't made it through it yet. Mm -hmm. But you've probably done it many of times, and you got the coach and all that stuff. And mm -hmm. I think that's the, my next step I need to do too. So. Yeah, it's really if you don't want to read the book, it's just about positivity. Like yep. you know, it, it's very popular in the sports to say "don't suck." That's yeah. one of the worst things you can say to a person, or like you know, don't don't miss it. Well, what do you envision yep. when missing someone says it. "don't miss it"? You envision missing it. Or yep. when someone says to a baseball player, "don't strike out." What do they picture doing? Striking out. Yep. And so instead, like, I don't like it when people ask me how the match is going. Mm -hmm. Because I, A, don't want to say how many I've dropped because that's negative. Mm -hmm. And off the top of my head, I don't know how many I've hit. And so, like, I'll say to people. Because you can't count that well. high. 
<laughs> 12 plus another 10 plus eight. That one was kind of rough, but then another 12. God, another clean, another I would lose count after the second stage. Oh. Not a chance. Yeah. I, I need my daughter for that. <laughs> right? Gosh. But yeah, it's all about positivity. Mm -hmm. And like, I then don't want to ask people like, oh, well, how the match is going? Because I don't want them to say to me, oh, I've dropped and this then, many. Yep. You know, so I'm like, oh, I don't want people to do that to me. So I don't want to do it to them. It's yep. just about positivity. Like, you know, just envisioning those impacts. So we need and, to give Paul a hard time because he counts backwards then. Because oh, he's I like, oh, I dropped him. four. And I'm I'll like, be like, yeah, but how many did you hit? Yeah, I'm like, oh, I don't count How many that did way. you hit? That's the key. He's like, you're at a different skill level now. You can count how many you miss. It's yeah, a lot see, less he counting. Yeah, tell me that because, <laughs> you know, he likes me. He's like, oh, oh he you're likes right. you. You're right, Cameron. I'm kidding. No, he likes oh, No. But he'll be like, okay, let me count out how many I've hit. All right, this is yeah. how many hit. I'm like, yeah. okay, positivity. Yep. Yeah, that's uh, awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks for tuning in. Thank Hopefully you. we have more of what the pros do mm -hmm. of how they shoot and how they train. Uh, but yeah, thanks again for coming on. Thank you. Thanks.